Katwakin katulungan, panagdur as pagsaya atan. Including indigenous land rights and culture. 
Because of their activism, they have been subjected to intensified vilification, demonization, and harassment um, even years prior to filing of uh, Trump up charges against them. We reiterate uh, the OCHR statement that it is the state's primary responsibility to ensure an enabling environment to all human rights defenders and to protect defenders from threats and attacks. So friends from the different sectors, NGOs, churches, and uh, seminaries, we welcome you all in this forum. And let us listen intently on how we can rise up above our struggle against the Anti-Terrorism Act and that of weaponizing the laws against us who are human rights advocates. So here's to a fruitful afternoon. Welcome everyone. My name is Josefa Tauli. Um, I'm Advocacy Officer for Partners for Indigenous Knowledge Philippines. Um, I'm a member of the Global Youth Biodiversity Network um, and the UN Secretary General's Youth Advisory Group on Climate Change. Um, but I'm here as the youngest child of Steve Tauli. Um, Steve Tauli was one of the four um, Indigenous activists who were falsely designated um, by the Anti-Terrorism Council as terrorists very recently. He, along with CPA leaders, um, Wendel Bolinet, Saga Alikas, and Jen Awingan, were included in Resolution 41 of the Anti-Terrorism Council. Um, and this designation is, of course, um, false and without basis. And we maintain that um, these four leaders, uncles, aunties, um, are not terrorists. We maintain that activism is not terrorism and that this is an attack um, against legal and justified criticism of the current governance and systems of oppression and impunity present in our country. Um, my father has been an activist since he, his youth. He has worked as a development worker um, and has been a community organizer uh, against destructive um, in industries, um, organizing communities against um, dams, um, organizing urban poor. Uh, he has done this for his whole life, defending indigenous people's rights. Uh, and so what this designation is causing us is, um, is that we're in a very um, we're in a very distressing situation. Uh, our family uh, is currently on high alert because obviously this causes a lot of threats to his safety and, all of, and the safety of other activists. Um, we are facing, uh, our bank accounts actually have been frozen um, because of this designation and we're also having to um, take legal action as remedy. So this is, very difficult because it's also the third incident that our family has faced since August of last year. In August of last year, my father, Steve Tauli, was abducted in front of the, uh, yeah, near the CPA office in Tabuk, Kalinga. Um, and this was one of the most terrifying days of our lives. Um, he, there he faced um, psychological torture and threat. Um, and thankfully, he um, was found around 24 hours later. And we can say the same for many other cases of disappearance, unfortunately. Um, we're still calling for surfacing, for example, of um, activists, um, Bazu de Jesus and Dexter Capoyan. Um, aside from that, uh, earlier this year, in February 2023, my father was also among the seven um, Northern Luzon activists, NL7, who were um, faced with trumped up charges of rebellion. Uh, thankfully, these were, uh, with the support of um, our lawyers, these cases were quashed in May because of lack of basis. Um, yes, this situation is 
difficult, but it's not an isolated case. It's a very much systemic problem that's coming from a context of impunity and oppressive governance that is present in our country. So coming from a family of indigenous peoples, human rights defenders, um, and as an activist myself, um, this threat of criminalization and abuse and disappearance um, is ever present. It's something that we have been fearing since childhood, unfortunately. And this is something that um, other activists in the country continue to face. The Philippines is one of the deadliest countries for environmental defenders. It's consistently the deadliest country in Asia, according to reports from Global Witness. Um, and indigenous peoples are among those who are most vulnerable to these kinds of attacks. And for, for what? Right? For defending our lands and our communities? Um, it's frankly uh, very ridiculous that those on the forefront of defending nature and communities from exploitation and corporate greed are those also being attacked for their work. Um, this kinds of acts threatens activism and activists of all ages, um, young and old, who are tirelessly working for justice. Um, and today is in the work the International Day for the World's Indigenous Peoples. Um, and it's a day to bring forth these kinds of issues relate that um, indigenous peoples all around the world face. Um, uh, these are common problems that we face in relation to the protection of our rights. Um, and it uh, emphasizes that there need to be special measures to protect um, indigenous peoples' rights. Um, so that is what I have to share to end. Uh, we really express again thanks to all who uh, continue campaigning and supporting the four indigenous activists, including my father, um, Sivita Uli, and Lyndon Brigham, and Jan Awingan, and Sarah Alikas. And um, also, uh, today on Indigenous Peoples Day, we continue to call for a stop on the attacks. We call for states to honor their obligations to protect indigenous peoples and environmental defenders. Um, and thank you very much. I look forward to the discussion this afternoon to hear from our supporters and what you can do. Yeah.
ka, bayan na pinagbala, bayan na may kalinga, kinabukasan alay sa mga bata. Maraming salamat po. Isang mainit na pagbati sa ating lahat sa pangdaigdigang araw na ito ng mga indigenous peoples. Mainit na pagbati po. Our history as a people, peoples, is a history of struggles, history of oppression and struggles. That has always been the case. It was just like the before. It is also still true now. Uh, this afternoon, I will give the context why we have this anti-terror law. And Dean Tony will uh, give the legal implication and how do we see this anti-terror law in the context of the uh, present situation that we are in. When the son of the dictator is back in Malacanang. Um, kung babalikan natin, uh, my opening statement is that our history as a people, as a nation, is a history of oppression and struggle. So, noon pa man, sa kapanahonan ng ating mga ninuno na nakikibaka para sa tunay na kalayaan, ay kaakibat na dyan, no? yung pagsupil sa ating mga karapatan. Uh, during the time of the colonizers, the Spaniards, then pumalit yung mga Amerikano, mga Hapon, at nung mawala na mga foreign colonizers, yung actual na nawala daw sila, but naiwan dito yung kanilang mga puppets. So, the succeeding governments, after this uh, colonial governments ay nawala, ay ganun din, no? Pilit nilang sinusupin yung uh, pagnanasa uh, ng ating mga mamamayan na talaga magkaroon ng tunay na kalayaan, genuine freedom, uh, genuine development, democracy. So there were uh, uh, pockets, and not even pockets, no? organized rebellions uh, waged by our people, not only here in the north, but even up to the south. So uh, siguro ang pinakamalalang batas, and uh, since even before, laws are weaponized not to have peace and order, not to make people you know, feel good about themselves, but laws are passed and weaponized para uh, masupil no, yung struggle, uh, continuing struggle of our people. And one of these laws na uh, tumawid no, from uh, the 50s up to even to the 90s uh, was the anti-subversion law. RA 1700. It was weaponized even before martial law. It was weaponized because it was passed in uh, 1957. Ginamit ito para supilin. No? Ang, uh, ang title ng batas na ito is to uh, illegalize the Partido Comunista ng Pilipinas, no? founded then in the 1930s by Cusanto Ipangilista. Uh, so, and the other organizations, no? dahil ito yung nag-wage ng armed struggle. No? Not only against uh, the exist then existing government, even during the time of the colonizers. No? Uh, sa panahon ng uh, World War II, ito yung lumaban talaga sa hapon na walang tigil. No? Nagtayo sila ng uh, hukbalhab, hukbo ng bayan laban sa hapon. So, uh, dahil... Uh, even after natapos yung uh, Gera Mundial or Second World War II, nakita ng ating mga kababayan na nandito pa rin. No? Ang pakikialam ng mga dayuhan, kaya nagtuloy-tuloy ang talagang struggle. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung pangangamkam ng mga lupa. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung pagsira ng mga ancestral lands ng ating mga katulubo. Kaya nagtuloy-tuloy ang struggle. And uh, in the... Ita... In 1972, when Marcos declared martial law, uh, he used this as a justification, the rebellion of the, of the people, no? uh, para i-declare ang martial law. At ginamit niya yung RA 1700 to arrest thousands of our people, no? uh, kinulong sila. So, 
And then, nagtuloy-tuloy. Uh, fast forward, patalsik si Marcos. Um, and, uh, ironically, it was a general president, a former general who became president, he died last year, last year, he died last year, who uh, called, called for the, uh, um, this, uh, repeal of RA-1700, because at that time, his government was in the thick of negotiation for a uh, political solution to the ongoing armed conflict in the country, uh, Fidel Ramos. So, in fact, uh, it was during the time of Fidel Ramos when the first ever uh, agreement was completely negotiated to address the ongoing armed conflict, now more than 50 years old. What was that agreement? The comprehensive agreement for the respect of human rights and international humanitarian law, or CARIL. Although while it was fully negotiated during the time of Ramos, it was signed during the first months of the uh, Estrada administration, if I'm not mistaken, August of uh, 1998. So, uh, but the, despite the Despite the repeal of RA 1700, we know that there are other more laws you know, uh, still present in our sa ating bansa. Anjan yung anti-rebellion laws. In fact, uh, there was a time na hindi nila sinasampahan ng rebellion. Yung mga uh, sinasabi nilang mga guerrillas, no? they criminalized dissent. No, by fight, they criminalize uh, the armed struggle of these revolutionaries by filing common crimes. No, sinasampahan nila ng multiple murder, arson. No, uh, so that was the trend. Uh, then the succeeding governments, especially when 911 happened. No, yung uh, natin yung 911. No, uh, when. Mm, President Bush said uh, after after the 911 uh, bombings in the U.S. Na the new war now is not actually a war against communism, but a war against what terrorism. No, terrorism na. So ginera uh, nila Afghanistan etc. But uh, they said they will be opening up a second front. Uh, in the war against terrorism, and that second front is here in the Philippines. So after that uh, statement, not only in the Philippines, many countries across the world uh, ay naglabas ng kanilang mga anti-terrorism laws. Sunod-sunod na. At uh, nangyari rin sa Pilipinas na ipasa in 2007, the Human Security Act. So, nagkaroon tayo ng Human Security Act. Ito yung ating version of the anti-terror law as a result of the 911. But, uh, uh, as history would have it, no? hindi masyado nagamit ng Estado ang uh, Human Security Act. Why? Because, uh, however it is flawed, no? I mean, inapanan pa rin namin yung Human Security Act, Pero may mga nilagay ng mga safeguards doon sa Human Security Act. Uh, for example, uh, in times of election, suspended ang Human Security Act. Bakit kaya? Takot yung mga politiko no, na gamitin yung Human Security Act. Second, uh, there was this proviso na if the, the state agents, the police or the military, will resort to an illegal arrest, they will be fined. For every day na na-detain ng isang tao, I think uh, uh, 500,000 or 50,000. So, naging uh, deterrent yun, no? na hindi masyado. I can only recall siguro three cases where the Human Security Act was applied uh, to in Mindanao against they labeled as violent extremists. These are Moro uh, armed groups, no? individuals, and I think there's one individual here in Luzon na sinampahan ng violation of human security. So, uh, during the time of uh, 
elected president. And even during the time of GMA, there was this pressure no? uh, from the security sector. And of course, the patron of the security sector, no? uh, Estados Unidos, dahil ang ating counterinsurgency program sa Pilipinas naman is pattern, pattern after the policy, a coin strategy ng US na baguhin, i-amend ang ating Human Security Act. So, uh, there were already attempts during the time of GMA, but they failed. Then after GMA, during the time of President Aquino, there was also an attempt, but again, they failed to pass, no? because uh, matindi yung paglaban. Then, there was this so-called socialist president who was elected in 2016, who promised Quote and quote, kakaya sa mga sosyalista. <laughs> uh, he promised that uh, as a, the first socialist president, he will initiate a thoroughgoing peace process and the uh, armed rebellion. Uh, in fact, even itong West Philippine Sea, sabi niya, I will, pag ako na-elect na presidente, I will jet ski to the Spratlys and plant our flag just to assert our sovereignty, etc., etc. And so, it was recorded in history na ang dami natin nabudol. <laughs> so, immediately after uh, Duterte was elected in 2016, this was already in the 17th Congress, it was my second term, bumalik ulit yung attempt. Uh, especially after the collapse of the talks in August of 2017. Uh, but before that, uh, in hindsight, and in fairness, during the, uh, that short period of August 2016, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, eight months, when the negotiation wasn't going, for that short eight-month period, napakalaki ng naisulong ng peace process. Uh, I know for a fact because I was one of the official observers ng House of Representatives sa four series of negotiations. No? Bakit ko nasabi na napakahaba ng naisulong? Because of the two administrations, no? total of siguro 15 years, ano? So, number of years. No? Uh, ang, after the Caril was signed in 1998, wala nang major breakthrough na nangyari. But in that so short period of time, uh, nagkaroon ng draft agreement. No? May mga draft agreement na on the uh, socio-economic reforms. Comprehensive agreement on socio-economic reforms. And na-strengthen, supposedly, yung mechanism under CARIL, yung Joint Monitoring Committee, na uh, supposedly will address the complaints from both parties. Kasi ito yung pinakamaganda, that CARIL is very unique document. You cannot find it elsewhere in the world. Kahit doon sa peace process ng Colombia, wala. Sa peace process ng IRA and uh, British government, wala. Itong Karil is very unique, very Filipino document, but it, it is recognized. So, uh, then, just before the collapse of the talks in April of 2017, there was already an interim peace agreement, a draft interim peace agreement. But, nawala lahat ito. Uh, dahil binasuran ni Duterte na mayagpat ang security sector. No? So, after that collapse, naglabas si Duterte ng Executive Order Number 70, if you can recall, uh, which created the... The ELCAC. The, the National Task Force to End the Local Communities Armed Conflict. No? And announcing that the new policy of his government is no longer to engage in a a peace process with the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, but through a localized peace talks. So, after that, sa ang second front nila is sa Congress to amend the Human Security Act. So, pinaratsada nila, pinabilis nila Human Security Act. Uh, that was 17th Congress. No? 
Grabe ang bakbakan namin no? sa loob. And uh, dahil medyo malakas pa naman ang ano noon, uh, at hatakan, they failed in the 17th Congress. Hanggang naabutan na, naabutan na lang ng pag-end ng 17th Congress. Hindi siya, nasa committee level pa yung uh, proposed law. Uh, the anti-terror law. Then, pumasok ang 18th Congress. Last three years ng Duterte administration. Probably learning from what happened in the 17th Congress na talagang naharang-harang uh, yung mga gusto nilang paghatsada. Um, and remember, this was already what, ha what happened in this 19th Congress. They uh, made use of COVID. Talagang sinamantala nila yung COVID. Uh, I recall, uh, nung mag-break kami in March of 2020, There was an agreement, karoon na ng hearing sa House, uh, but there, there was an agreement na when we resume our session in May of 2020, magkaroon pa kami ng apat na hearings sa committee. Uh, so, ang ginawa nila, uh, then March, nag-break, then the COVID, nagdeklara na ng lockdown. And lo and behold, pagbalik namin sa May, eh wala nang ano eh, face-to-face -face session. Zoom na lang. So ang ginawa nila, anong ginawa nila? Sinabi na lang, in-announce na lang sa amin, ah, we will just adapt the Senate version. Ang Senate version, talagang malalang version ng human security, ah, ng anti-terror law. Uh, because at that time, nandun rin yung nandun si Natalianes, nandun si na, uh, parang si Gringo, nasa ni si Natalianes. Although marami rin namang militar sa House. Pero dahil Ah, si Lokson pala is the principal sponsor sa Senate. Sa House, marami rin mga former military, former police, but it's different in the House dahil sensitive yung mga congressman. No? Ah, sinabi na rin, gusto niya ba na pati yung kayo later, di-declare kayo ng mga terorista or yung mga bank accounts niyo, yung freeze, ganyan, ganyan. So, we put a, a lot of safeguards doon sa version ng House. Parang doon, mas... Maraming safeguards kumpara sa Human Security Act of 2007. And apparently, they did not like it. No? Uh, so, when we resume, in May of 2020, ayun, in-announce na lang sa amin that we will adapt uh, the Senate version. Of course, we objected. Nagkaroon ng butuhan. Ah, siyempre, eh, talo kami. No? Sabi nga. So, uh, yun yung history doon. No? Pumasa na sa committee, Sinalang sa plenaryo, and because it's already lockdown period, uh, nung sinalang sa plenaryo, ang inalaw lang, uh, tatlo from the uh, uh, oppositors to interpolate, walang mag-interpolate sa majority, and then it was passed on second reading, and it was passed finally on third and final reading. And in, on June 3 of uh, 2020, it was signed into law by uh, Duterte. So bakit ba natin, uh, siguro short na lang, dito Tony will elaborate later, bakit ba natin uh, tinutulan ito? Ang sabi natin, hindi ito ang pangangailangan, especially during the time of pandemic, irarasada mo ang anti-terror law. Is it, uh, pwede ba natin declare na terorista si COVID? Bakit mo irarasada ang anti-terror law? Uh, people at that time, uh, even the world, is preoccupied on how to combat COVID-19. But in the Philippines, yun ang niratsada. Uh, because, sabi ko nga, napakatagal lang talaga nilang gustong baguhin ang human security act. At nakakita sila ngayon ng oportunidad. Now, uh, bakit ba natin tinutulan yan? Sabi nila, para raw ito masupo ang terorismo. No? Pero hanggang ngayon, kahit na United Nations, hindi nga nagkakaisa sa definition. Ano ba ang terorismo at sino ba ang terorista? No? Uh, si ang China, meron silang mga yung mga Tibet at uh, taga Tibet, tatawagin niyang terorista, no? Sa ibang lugar, iba ang pagkaka uh, ano nila sa terorista. Sa Amerika mismo may mga tinatawag din silang terorista. Ngayon sa Pilipinas, maliban sa CTG Anong CTG? Communist Terrorist Group? 
Meron na rin tayong TTG. Ano yun? The Tevis Terrorist Group. Baka bukas, meron lang si... Ano ulit? Pantal Terrorist. Huwag naman sana din, ano? LVG? LTG? Labinya Terrorist Group. So... Labinya Sarate. Oh, Labinya. So, that's the danger that we want to prevent, no? Doon sa... Anti-terror. Because of the broadness of the law, one of the issue na nilatag natin, very broad, uh, yung pagkahulugan nila. Even yung mga uh, supposedly offenses na, na, na enumerate doon ay broad. No? It can even uh, be interpreted in so many ways. But what is worse, what is worse, here is an unelected group that is given so much power. In fact, I can liken them to a junta. They can exercise executive powers, they can exercise quasi-judicial powers, and in fact, they can exercise quasi-legislative powers. Why executive? Because they're all part of the executive, itong anti-terror council. Why quasi-judicial? Because they can write a letter addressed to law enforcement agencies No, the police, the military, and sabihin nila, oh, hulihin ninyo si Atty. Claver for giving material aid and support. They can do that. So that's a power of a, of a uh, judiciary, no? magpahuli. Third, quasi-legislative, because they can come up with a lot of policies that may affect our day-to-day -day lives. But they are not members of Congress. No? So what are they? They are the members of the Anti-Terrorism Council. So, para sila junta in a democratic setting like this. So, yan ang isa sa talagang nilalabanan natin yun. At nakita na natin yung masamang epekto nito no? sa current situation of our colleagues, comrades and friends here in the Cordilleras as well as in the other parts of the country. Activists are now being labeled, designated as terrorists. Hindi ka pa kriminal, pero meron ka nang naglalakad ka dyan sa Session Road na nakalagay na sa'yo dito, terrorista, because they already, they already designated. Without due process. Hindi ka man lang na-text, hey, yo, we will declare you as a terrorist. Wala. Dihani ho. Tapos, ang iyong, ang, ang, hindi lang ang account mo. Pati yung ATM kung saan yung sweldo ng asawa mo, ng anak mo, na natatrabaho sa munisipyo, frozen. But more than that, yung uh, the chilling effect of this kind of uh, act, state act against activists, against uh, human rights defenders. So, ayun. Uh, So tingin namin, at tayo ay tumatayo pa rin, na ang batas na ito is truly anti-people, just like the anti-subversion law before, uh, and the other anti-people laws na kailangan labanan natin. No? Uh, sa lahat ng kapamaraanan, legal, meta-legal, extra-legal, no? at magsama-sama tayo. And uh, we are optimistic. Uh, history tells us, na namamayani ang nakikibak ang mamamayan. No? At sa tuwi-tuwi na, ang ating aasahan, ang ating paghuhugutan ng lakas, ay ang ating tuloy-tuloy na pakikisa, pagsama-sama, no? uh, sa araw na ito, ng pandigang araw ng mga katutubo, uh, mula sa mga kapatid nating lumad sa Mindanao, na, na uh, grabe rin ang pag-atake hindi lang sila designated. They were already uh, killed six feet below the ground. Marami sa atin doon. Uh, at sa mga tumandok sa Visayas, at sa mga kaigurotan dito sa Cordilleras, at sa lahat ng nakikibakang mamamayan, uh, kaya natin itong labanan. And uh, ang ating presensya sa araw na ito ay isang simbolo, uh, emblematic of how uh, porsigido tayo ng labanan ito. Kaya dito na ako magtatapos. Salamat sa lahat. At biyak ti umili.
Um, nasira yung opening line ko kasi yung opening line ko dapat kanina ng umaga nag early breakfast ako ng isang estudyante ko si Professor Lolo Reyes sa St. Louis University tapos umuulan pa nang sinundo niya ako purang dumating kami sa tungkol sa damay na na breakfast biglang may sun na di ba? first time nagkas, nagka-araw first time there's been sun in uh, nine weeks di ba? two weeks lang mas sun kasi 21 days sun sa akin sun friend ko has been called. Every day talaga nilagay niya yung mulan pa rin ganyan na. So suddenly may sun, di ba? Kaya ako ginising yung mga kasama ko. Uy, gising na kayo pag nadating ko dyan kasi mag-burn out tayo. Kasama ko pa yung uh, younger colleagues. Wala sila kasi <laughs> pumunta muna ng ano, ng, uh, ng ano tawag nito? Good Shepherd. Probably kagad yun. Sabi ko mas importante nandito kayo sa dialogue uh, when, when, when it comes. Uh, sabi ko mas harahan daw. But uh, my opening, ano uh, sana, I said, we brought sun and light <laughs> to the party. And we will try to bring sun and light to you in this forum, no? Um, madugo ang ating sitwasyon, well, literally speaking. Um, Mahira, I mean, Josefa shared her family story and three other family story and many other families story, Dexter also and, and, and Basu de Paso. Talagang madilim, di ba, yung ating, uh, what we are facing. We're faced with darkness, let's be clear about that. Uh, um, but you know that already, di ba, so parang my thing is, how do we bring sun and light to this darkness? So that we can see at least the end, di ba, of this. Uh, historically, as um, Kaloy said, we, sh we, we will be okay, we will triumph. Huh? We've seen this naman. You've seen this, the Kondidiari peoples have seen this uh, in hundreds of years. Uh, but even in recent history, uh, I actually find it very gratifying uh, that we were asked here, we're both from Mindanao, from the Davao, uh, Jansan area, Sikalo, and from the Kagendiolo, uh, northern Mindanao area. I find it gratifying because uh, um, Luma, Mindanao, and Cordillera connection. It's a very strong connection. Um, I'm very proud na yung uh, team of lawyers that I had that kami yung nag represents across the board na maraming mga indigenous peoples, including Sibindal here, uh, um, Beverly Longhead versus uh, Executive Secretary, yung aming, aming uh, petition. Uh, but I also made sure when we started talking about it, na kailangan me from Santa Luzon, kailangan from me from uh, Mindanao, kailangan me more than sa petition. Kasi we made a case about anti-terror law being bad for first peoples, uh, Cordillera peoples, Lumad peoples, Moro peoples. Uh, yun yung big, because they're the first victims of the anti-terror law. So yun yung framing ng, ng aming uh, uh, petition. And on a personal note, the working with attorney Frank Clever now and his son and, and the Cordillero Dead Lawyers here of Pag. It's very gratifying for me kasi um, when I started as a very young person, 15 years old, in the anti-Marcos uh, dictatorship struggle in Mindanao, si Bishop Clever was our bishop in Bukidno and that stood up the most. It was a, person from the Cordillera transplanted through the Jesuits diba, to Bukidnon that actually led the fight uh, for human rights uh, in, in Mindanao before he was returned back here, as you know, also as a bishop here. And so um, I want us to remember that history, because that history alone should give us sun and light, diba? which means we also have to preserve ourselves and to find new ways of fighting while this darkness is going on. Um, you focus, my focus for today's um, uh, forum will be on indigenous people's rights and anti-terror law. Uh, Konkaloy gave us the full picture how the anti-terror developed, even from international and then to the to the national, the history uh, from the anti-subversion law, which we successfully repealed. Um, I actually was a witness of how that was because that was a youth set a very young undersecretary in the Department of Environment and Natural Resources during the time of 
of Rama was an part of the debate should this be repealed? And the answer was yes, it should be it should be repealed. Should we go into a peace process with the Communist Party and the NDFP? Yes, also was a clear clear uh, no. and what do you need to have to do the process very clear huh? at the time make consensus within the government na, na indigenous people's rights must be recognized uh, if you want peace a permanent peace settlement for for um, for the country so I'd like to focus on and that and I'd like to focus on three three points na, sa, uh, in my intervention um, the first is how exactly are indigenous peoples and indigenous peoples advocates, leaders, mass movements, um, and of course defenders affected by the anti-terror law. Let's 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 look at that, including the case of the four uh, people uh, that have been no, no, that have been. Uh, are designated as as terrorists. So, so, what's the actual threat? How real is the is the threat? That's the first thing I'd like us to to I'd like to share and some thoughts about you to provoke you also. I mean, you should feel free later on to ask questions and to share your own thoughts about about uh, what this is. Now, the second point I'd like to make is how do we respond? Uh, Legally, of course, we can answer that, but uh, other forms of resistance, anong ibang paraan ng pakikibaka? What are the other forms of resistance that we can have to the anti-terror uh, law while it is still there? No? And to the extent this, that the uh, NTFLK, um, the fascist government, let's call that a spade, a spade, have the upper hand. How can we, we uh, respond? And the third point I'd like to make is still about response, but much future looking. Right? Yung, what are the new ways we can continue to chant our struggles? Uh, are there new ways to chant our struggles? Both defensive because of the anti-terror law, but also because it's the calling of the times. Right? Uh, I'm very glad to have heard, for example, Josefa uh, also being uh, involved in climate justice uh, and biodiversity, um, uh, the fight for biodiversity, because uh, there are many, many new, and I'm also very happy of the set of the four the groups that are here, the diversity of the groups uh, here, um, and many youth, and also the Council of you know, uh, National, and many of the youth groups. Um, because the youth is so critical for, for this third, this third, and what are the new ways to chant our, our struggles? But first, the basics about anti-terror law and indigenous peoples. Um, dun sa ano namin, sa petition namin with Beverly, uh, um, and others, I mean, uh, we uh, pointed out how in our history, right, inuuna palagi ng state mechanisms of coercion, di ba? Inuuna palagi yung mga indigenous peoples. Alam natin anong dahilan, di ba? Kasi nandun yung likas yaman, natural resources is there, uh, with indigenous peoples, the experience of oppression is ever present. Uh, it just happens in cycles. Um, there are naturally resistant the tribes in the Cordillera uh, or the tribes in Mindanao. They're naturally resistant to government projects or outside projects. Um, and so, because of that resistance, automatically the state brands them as enemy of the people, or enemy of the country, enemy of the government. Um, and so, an anti-terror law is we we are good no? is the most um, uh, uh, is most dangerous to uh, indigenous peoples. 
So oral argument actually because in our team dun sa mga lahat ng mga mga nag-file ng petitions, lahat kinaster kami eh. So yung madamang may several naman na na petitions that were based on indigenous peoples and modern rights. We we chose actually sa team namin, we chose uh, as a team sa we chose a, a, a moral lawyer na na very familiar with with anti-terror law. Kasi nauna na eh. Yung may human security akin hindi before that, talagang inuuna yung mga, mga suspected ng mga Abu Sayyaf, etc. na marami. Na, na mali din. Di ba? In, in fact, you will see that the problem for the government, I remember the the, the ano kaloy, no? the deliberation, kasi I was always guesting for for the House. Uh, bakit tinatanggal ang safeguards? Kasi walang nakukonvict. They will not convict the Human Security Act, which was strange. They will not convict, including in the prescription. Nang ano? Hindi dahil ano? Di ba hindi dahil the law is bad. The law is bad, by the way. Human Security Act was not also a great law, di ba? But certainly better than that. There are lots more amin ano, lots more amin protections. Pero at kita mo yung yung filala ng prescription case. Uh, 600, uh, uh, more than 600 individuals, including seven, are also here from CPA and from, from Baguio. Not this Misha. That's a judicial decision. And then, so judicial decision, you kind of have a better chance for due process. But, sa, sinasabi niya, mahirap pa siya doon batas yung human security and when it's something more, more, ano, no, more, um, that would side with the, with, with the government. And we were pointing out dun sa, dun sa, dun sa, grupo namin na, well, ang una magbibigta yung aming mga kliyente. And, and true enough. To, so, of course, the, the Moros, always, di ba? Always, yeah. I live in Cagendeor. I grew up in Cagendeor. It's a uh, given. Eh, talagang, pag nag-gera doon, hindi mo na pinag-usapan yung karapatan. No? no rights are respected. People are just shot up, killed, arrested. Can't they? They have nothing to do with the combat. Because we're now never in all of this discussion are we saying, diba, if it's combat to combat, the rules of war apply, humanitarian law applies. Diba? But we're, if we're talking about non combatants, it's a different set of laws that applies. So human rights terms applies, etc. So, um, but the anti terror law conflates all of that. Diba? Yun ang pinaka problema ng, ng anti terror law. Um, and pinaka. pinaka makes it most dangerous to indigenous peoples, activists, defenders, mostly leaders, because they're at the forefront of the resistance to things like mining, uh, energy projects, the uh, dams, as, as we know here in, in the Caldera, uh, even simple things like like uh, roads, right? Kung may resistance na ganon, automatically conflict na yun ngayon, right? Na Una activist, but activist na terrorist. Eh, di ba? Um, ang conflation dito is terrorist. In fact, very important na hindi natin na maraming kinoconflate sa word na terrorist, na dangerous. Uh, one is uh, activist. Alam na natin yun. Uh, na, na, uh, uh, activists are... Uh, even, by the way, uh, uh, we won that particular argument in the law. The law, kasi originally, the anti-terror law, as passed, had a section which said na, um, it's not terrorism to express your constitutional rights. Di ba? Uh, so, okay. Yan, uh, but, but, kung may rally, may strike, may mass action that results in violence, in killing, in etc., then that is terrorism. That's the original law. Pero tinanggal yan ang Supreme Court. Sabi ng Supreme Court, hindi pwede yan kasi that is so vague. Diba? So my reading of that, that was a small victory in the in the Kalieha case. My reading of that, and our reading of that, so when we read that was that the Supreme Court actually said terrorism is not Activism is not terrorism. Even, even when it results in violence. Diba? Kasi nga, masyadong vague yun. In other words, kung may rally kayo, tapos din disperse yung rally, di ba? Nag, naging violent, di ba? Or may strike 
uh, yung, yung labor labor unions uh, yung isang labor union tas nag, nag, nag may pumasok na mga eskiroros, cops and, and tries to enter and, and disrupt the picket line there's violence that cannot be in any circumstance now after the Supreme Court decision terrorism so ito terrorism is activism we have we should have won that di ba? so eventually when, when we if you have to go to the Supreme Court on the four uh, people that were delisted and other list, we will make that argument. But I saw said opinion and it's for our activists, that's their history. There's nothing that the government has come up with na, that tells us that they are doing other things other than being 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 activists. Ba? And you didn't think the Supreme Court actually say that activism is not terrorism. So clear yan. but as we are seeing in ignore yon ng executive branch as they did in this designation of of, of the four Cordillera. Uh, activists that they're now doing also in other places like Southern Tagalog, yung, ito the other very dangerous phrase sa atin, di ba, is yung material support. Giving material support to terrorism, di ba? So, um, ibig sabihin, if you are, di ba, uh, doing humanitarian actions, if it's a being, if you are a family member providing sanctuary, diba? is that material aid? If you're a lawyer um, that is giving aid to your to your clients, diba? uh, clear sa akin, hindi yan, hindi yan kasama dun sa material aid. But you have to test that. Unfortunately, kinoconflate din na Any kind of material aid, diba? I think iba yung ang, the way I describe this when I when I tell people is iba yun kung di ba o maghanda ka ng 100 backpacks and then sa 100 backpacks manong ka mga mga di ba may mga bullets ka may mga yan bibigay mo yun sa isang armed unit yun na yung material aid di ba na may mga, pero iba yung kung nagbibigay ka ng 100 food packs to a community that might in fact, be an organized community, but after a disaster that you do that. And certainly, if you're a family member providing support to your fellow mem member, or a lawyer providing support, that it should not be the case. But they have conflated that. And unfortunately, it will take a while bago ma-clarify yan and very, maging very clear na hindi pwede siya. Yung isa pang conflation ng, ano, ng, uh, so anti-terror law uh, is, of course, with revolutionary. So this has to be understood. No? I mean, um, um, and actually, Justice John and Councilor Baguio has explained that very well. Even in the martial law cases, dun sa um, case ng Lagman versus ano, no? Medjadea, the, the first martial law case, na ulit ulit siya, no? See, Justice John was the only lawyer that said that the, the um, hindi pwedeng mag-martial law sa maka, ma, Marawi. <laughs> sa Marawi. Ba't hindi pwedeng mag-martial law sa Marawi? Kasi uh, mga terrorist yun. Under, under terrorist yun sa Marawi. Diba? Those were, those were ISIS. Globally, that's the meaning of terrorism. Ano yung sabi ng terrorism? Indiscriminate, the firing, using of guns, explosives, the uh, without even a clear political end, like a, like the usually not, not necessarily ideological, not necessarily uh, ano, iba yun from a revolutionary movement. That's why we're able to actually negotiate the revolutionary movement, because there are objectives of revolutionary movement, the that you can find common cause. Like what said Nicolai, na na ano, nagkaroon ng progress dun sa CASER uh, in the few months na nagninegotiate sila Duterte. I was actually part of the government uh, CASER group, di ba? That helped write many of the CASER agreements on the government side. And that was not too far. Instructions sa amin nun was um, try to look at the NDF position and then find ways na matawid yung position, di ba? And ako born negotiator ako, matagal na ako na negotiate both nationally. In the, I've been 
discussion I've been in every government panel negotiating with MNLF, MILF, and the NDFP since the Ramos time. Uh, in different forms, no? as a panelist, actual negotiator, as a resource person, as a consultant. But I've always done it from the government side. Kasi, well, I've always found that yung government ang mas kailangan ng tulong kaysa yung revolutionary movement. <laughs> Kasi yung revolutionary movement, alam, 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 revolutionary movement, alam nila what they need, eh, what they want. Diba? Uh, but the government, generally, part of the politics, the so revolutionary movements, that's MNLF, MILF, and NDFP. Diba? Uh, they had the same negotiators for like 30 years. Until, of course, well, lately, of course, they obviously they have to change uh, since Joma uh, died last December, but Juliet will be, I suppose, the, the, from, from their side, the main advisor. Um, but they usually don't change negotiators for a long time, uh, only for help reasons, the people move out finally. Uh, well, the government, every administration, nagbabago, di ba? Ang panel. Uh, so I find out that someone like me who's been in the process for a long time uh, is needed more by government than by, by the other side. And so so I've, I've done that part. And uh, the, the issues that separate um, our main revolutionary movements uh, and the uh, Philippine government are actually not that far from each other. They're actually not that far from each other. I mean, uh, including on indigenous people's rights, which I will go to in a, in a few minutes. I mean, indigenous people's rights, uh, there is a consensus in government and in society about indigenous people's rights. We never have any problems pag policy ang pinag-usapan. Ang problema natin pagdating ng implementation, pagdating ng specific things on how to do specific things like free and prior informed consent, for example. We were one of the first countries in the world to accept that, but we're not very far behind from other countries in implementing it. Kasi hindi pa rin natin nahanap yung paraan ng pag-implement. Uh, we were one of the first to say, kailangan tayo mag-designate, mag, di ba, mag-delineate, di ba? Uh, ng, ng, ano, ng, ng ancestral lands and ancestral domains. But 30 years after IPRA was, was ano, uh, enacted, we're so far away from completing that process, di ba? Uh, well, I will tell you among others because we gave it to an agency, the NCIP, that didn't have any capacity for delineation. Uh, didn't have any budget also, in fairness, for delineation when it would have been the most important thing. So I think, I think my, my point is that the, 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 the societal consensus sa ating mga conflicts, diba, should actually be negotiable. So there is no reason why you should make revolutionaries terrorists or conflate them as terrorists and not negotiate with them because you can actually negotiate with them. To be honest, I mean, uh, hindi siya very far apart. Yung ISIS, hindi ka talaga makaka-negotiate sa ISIS kasi ng ISIS gusto nila, di ba, na lahat tayo mag-convert, gusto nila lahat ng babae nakabihis ng ganito, di ba? That, that's very, very, very clear yan. Na, wala rin akong judgment about that if in a society people do that. But in a diverse society, you cannot do that. We know, we know even, even in Mindanao, you know you cannot do that, di ba? Um... So Justice Leonard was pointing that out. Uh, it is under our law, diba? you can only declare martial law if there's rebellion, actual rebellion, or actual invasion. Since the Marawi terrorists, ISIS, were terrorists, not revolutionaries, therefore there was no rebellion in Marawi. There was a terrorist incident that you have to fight time, but, but not through martial law, but through 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 just the calling out of military forces against terrorism. When we were discussing that the um, anti-terror law in Congress, ang palagi nilang babanggitin sa iyo, yung, yung terrorism, di ba na ano, uh, I don't like to use the word Islamic terrorism, but yung religious terrorism na lang, religious extremism, religious, because there's also other forms, nila naman Islamic yun, diba? Uh, religious violent extremism. Kaya, kasi yun naman talaga globally ang, 
ang, ang, ang, ang problem. But in terms of implementing it, they've been implementing it to diba, secular revolutionary movements that, that, that conflates it. So that's a problem. Tayo lang ang gumagawa ng ganyan in the world uh, na ng ganyan classing conflation. Ang ibig sabihin actually dyan, ang implication pa dyan, most probably you will not solve the problem of what I would call real terrorism. Kasi your, your, your emphasis now is on a problem that's been there for 50 years and the solution to that is, is in fact negotiations. Diba? Uh, that's the solution is negotiations. But you're now fighting it with tools that you develop for a different group of people uh, that needs to be fought. Diba? And dito, going back to my thing kanina, ang una mong inaatake, yung mga katutubo, indigenous peoples. And not even because they're revolutionaries, but because they are at the front lines of the fights on you know, climate justice, on biodiversity, on, on mining, on land rights, etc. So I think that's the reason why the anti-terror law is a law most dangerous for indigenous peoples. I mean, I, um, I take it very personally, ha, kasi dun sa mga clients ko, may isa lang pinatay, si Chad Boho, uh, dun sa petition namin. And then there's Windal, di ba? I mean, in fact, how we got into this particular case is that because Windal asked me to be involved and help out, di ba? Knowing that it should be the Baguio and Cordillera lawyers that should be and this is something you can you contact uh, Councilor Joe, Attorney Joe, who's been known for a long time, and Attorney Fran. Uh, that was, that was, uh, no, I mean, that was, I uh, know, because they'll be the ones. So I, that's when I contacted and we offered, we will help as much. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's very personal because they were exactly what we said in the anti in the anti terror repetition. Na ito ang mga yari sa mga kliente namin. This is what will happen to our clients if. If this is not um, declared unconstitutional, exactly uh, what that is now. Um, and since I'm at, at this point, I also want to say to Josefa that I have long-standing relationships with with many of the Carino and uh, Tauli family, and, and so it's also very personal to me. And I also know Jennifer's uh, daughter because I'm a lawyer of the YS in in and also. This case is very personal to me, and when they ask us to help, said yes right away. We will, we will put our resources into this. I'm sure we will win this, huh? but I don't know when. I can't promise when. <laughs> no problem. I'm sure we will win this. I'm sure. Magdilang ng hell lang ako, di ba? Na na ano? Preserve lang natin sila, na di ba? They're na ano? But in a year, two years, I'm may may victory. Symposium tayo dito, and ibitahin niyo ako. At sasabihin ko na two years ago, we said this. But two years is also unacceptable, di ba? Because of the chilling effect. That's why, that's the second point I want to 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 make now. Yung, ano yung defense natin? Uh, and that it will work, and have confidence it will work. Uh, but it's not enough, and it will not guarantee you, di ba? Even if you win legally, now we win the fight. If you allow us to be chilled, di ba? Uh, which is the intent. Uh, may analogy ako dito, ano, I mean, and, and share ko lang yung aking kasisayan din sa Baguio City. If, if I'm from Mindanao, like, <laughs> always been in love with Baguio City for, and the Cordillera for many, many reasons. Yung private ones, I share ko lang sa iba po yung public ones na. <laughs> Ang public ones is that, uh, uh, college law student pa ako sa UP. Uh, nagkakilala kami ni Justice Marvin Cleone. Tagapagyo si Justice Marvin, di ba? Uh, and we had a teacher called Owen Lynch. Uh, who's really the, ironically, Americano, but really the first thinker, in terms of law, ha, of indigenous people's rights in the Philippines and how we could use ordinary national law and ordinary principles like due process for indigenous people. At siya nag-introduce sa amin ang Karin University General Government. Tagal na yun ang kaso, but it was forgotten case, di ba? Uh, for, for many reasons. So, so because of that, si Justice Langan and I, and another colleague, si Gus Gatmaitan, and si Noan Entroyo, 
uh, we founded the Legal Rights and Natural Resources Center, which was a very, we were all very young, progressive. As activist lawyers, we would file a lot of cases, uh, not sure we will win, I and mean, probably, in fact, maybe we won't win, but that's okay, you file the cases because you want to generate, di ba, uh, an outcome. Sa amin, yung outcome, takutin mo yung government person na mali yung ginagawa mo, di ba, na unconstitutional yung ginagawa mo. Uh, so we did it across the board, uh, first losing a lot of cases, but eventually winning many of, their, of our cases. In fact, we won so many of our cases that eventually kinausap pa ba ng DNA Secretary during the FPR time. Punta ka na dito sa amin kasi palagi naman kayo na natatalo sa inyo, di ba? So, na pinapunta ko sa DNR to i-fix daw yung mga para. Hindi naman na para mananalo kami against uh, mananalo ang DNR against civil society, but para ma-avoid na lang yung situation na palagi na natatalo daw yung, yung DNR, di ba? So, that's when I became uh, DNR under Secretary. Dami ko nagawa sa Baguio, I dealt with the the John Hay, EIA, I did I did mining, many of the mining issues here, etc. 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 di ba? Hindi ko lang banggitin, but most of it, I did the right thing. I didn't necessarily win everything, but I did the right thing. I'm always proud of that. But, my point is you can use the law, di ba? To, even when the law is against you, when the law is not in your favor, you can use it to fight back your favor. Now, there's the twist here. Ang twist dito, yung ginagawa ng NTFL ka, and even yung ginagawa ng government with anti-terror law, it's all wrong. It's really wrong. Diba? Uh, diba? Talagang, talagang, ano, uh, even if you agree with the, like the decision of the Supreme Court on the anti-terror law, as in sabi naman naman the Supreme Court doon actually, to be honest, is uh, parang you're conveying the worst case situation, hindi pa naman talaga nangyayari yun. Eh ngayon yung nangyayari na, tinan mo yung designation na ito. This is so arbitrary, di ba? Exactly what we are saying, there is no basis for the designation of these four Cordillera activists. Care for the families, of the defenders, the defenders themselves, diba? It's something I'm still trying to think to kung ano yung response na, again, hindi din mag, diba, hindi ka tatamaan dun sa sa uh, material support na provision na ano. But that, I think, is the, the uh, 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 thing that we will have to to do. And I think, balik sa indigenous people search, all of that are guaranteed under the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples which we celebrate today in World Indigenous Peoples Day. Finally, uh, how do we respond to this in a more future-looking way, di ba? Hindi lang yung image na outline ko na special chat image. Ano yung ating response sa future dito? And you have to turn to the young people, di ba? Because you are the, but the masters of new technology, of new ways of communicating. Help us figure that out, di ba? Ako sa team ko, I'm asking Sam to, to, for example, understand AI and use AI for the struggle, di ba? Given na yan eh. I'm sure there are ways you can do AI to also protect ourselves, to be able to continue to chant our struggles with more protection. Because uh, I will also say, diba, given our experience, our recent experience, important to protect yourself, important to preserve yourself, diba? Uh, important to use this moment in history when it seems that the other side has the upper hand uh, to preserve ourselves for a time when we will have the better, in a better position and have the upper hand in front of us. And so I think that's uh, I mean, that's uh, uh, something that I would like you to like to challenge uh, us uh, about. I mean, uh, so that then, in fact, itong moment na ito is not a lost moment, diba? It's not a bad memory in August. 
te lo scelgo <laughs> It's not a bad man mo moment in August, di ba? But in fact, it's a moment that when we remember it, di ba? When we celebrate the complete vindication of the activists, hopefully, we will be able to find and also have them release Dexter and Bazoo and others, di ba? Uh, then we will remember this time as a time we learned a lot, uh, we were down and out, we were done, so we were down but not out, and we learned a lot, and we were able, because of that, to now have the upper hand. Because I will say, maximum na yung three years, you will have the upper hand, and we will have the upper hand. I really, really uh, uh, believe that. Maraming uh, salamat. Really, very difficult. You know? 
in the present that there are all of these attacks. It is really very difficult. And it is something that we have to deal with at present. So uh, I think that there are lessons to learn also from a very difficult period in our history in the past. You know, there are lessons to learn from, from martial law because this was also a period when human rights were really uh, almost banished and especially during the, the early dark years, parang, parang wala naman pag-asa, no? parang the forces of tyranny were so strong and the forces of good were, were so weak. And yet, we see that although it took a long time, it took actually 14 years of martial law, naibagsak din ng nagkakaisang mamayang Pilipino ang isang napaka-dakas na diktadura. And therefore, there are important lessons to learn from the martial law period of how to deal with difficult periods like it is now when yun, the attacks are so grave, extrajudicial killings and forced disappearances, and then here in the Cordillera, very recently, just this 2023, and dami dami ng atake sa atin, and now the designation of our four leaders as terrorists, and we do not know who of us will follow to be designated as terrorists. Oppression, the lesson from martial law is that oppression breeds resistance. I mean, the human spirit can take only so much oppression before resistance develops. That's the lesson from, from martial law. And that even if uh, we just persist in doing, continuing, striving to educate, to organize, even in the face of uh, difficult odds, the small victories will pile up. No? The small victories that we gain will pile up and will reach a turning point, which was when the critical mass was reached that was able, able to topple a dictator. But in the meantime, we should really be ready to face difficult days. In any struggle, there is sacrifice and even death. No? is a common occurrence. And yun nga, it is so difficult for the families, of course, who have been designated as terrorists. We heard from Josefa and the family of Windel, of Jen. Of, so, of course, we have to provide all of the support and uh, solidarity that can be provided. But the important thing is not to get, uh, what do you call this, demoralized because of the chilling effect that all of this is intended to do. Ang gusto naman nito ay patigilin tayo, no? patahimikin tayo. Diba? This is what this is all intended to do. So, kahit sa mahirap na kalagayan ngayon, kailangan magpursigit tayo. And that's why actually, the mantra of our slogans from the martial law period are still very relevant today. You know? So in any struggle, there is sacrifice. We will have to be prepared to sacrifice because the struggle is difficult. There will be those who will still be attacked, there will be those who will be killed, there will be those who will be imprisoned. Bahake yan ng pakikibaka. Pero yun nga, saan tayo humuhugot ng lakas? Parang, dyan din tayo humuhugot ng lakas. From our martyrs of the Cordillera struggle who have gone before us. From their example of resistance. Like in the example of the resistance to Chico, resistance to Sedufil resistance to the development aggression projects which were brought to the region. And magpursigit tayo 
no? Mag-persevere tayo in the struggle. Ngayon, I would like to also add, I always want to say this, the majority of us here are still the young people. And parang totoo yun eh, na yung kabataan sila yung pag-asa ng bayan. Uh, our struggle for a just uh, Philippine society has been continuing because it is systemic. But we know that the struggle will continue. Kasi marami, maraming mga kabataang aktivista ang tuloy-tuloy na na basically na recreate din ng this repressive situation, no? That is part of the resistance that is developing to a very repressive situation. And therefore, totoo naman eh, no matter how long it takes, it just struggle will bear fruit. Nakita naman natin yan, ano, from our struggle against dictatorship and tyranny na naipanalo din natin yan. So, yung Tony was saying, three to five years at least in terms of the anti-terrorism act, it may, it may already be repealed as unconstitutional. But in the meantime, in the meantime, in these difficult days, let us continue to be brave let us continue to assert our rights. Hindi yan terorismo, ano? This is just standing up for people's rights. Let us continue to provide strength and solidarity to each other. Let us continue, no? With the Cordillera Mass Movement for national freedom and democracy and self-determination. Maraming salamat.